Here we're going to look at two nice number puzzle type problems that come from the 2009 Paraguay Math Olympiad. Okay, so let's see the first one. We want to evaluate this big sum. So it's 2 plus 33 plus 6 plus 35 plus 10 plus 37 all the way up to 1094 plus 629. So we're going to start by generalizing this a little bit because I think maybe that's like a kind of nice strategy and then evaluate the generalization at the appropriate value. So let's first notice that all of these numbers 2, 6, 10, and so on and so forth are of the form 2 plus 4n. And we can see that because they start at 2 and there's a gap of 4 between them. And then furthermore, all of these numbers, 33, 35, 37, so on and so forth, look like 33 plus 2n. That's because they start at 33 and there's a gap of 2 between them. So an appropriate generalization of this sum might look like this. We've got 2 plus 33 plus 6 plus 35 plus dot dot dot. So the last term of this 2 plus 6 plus 10 and so on and so forth will be 4n plus 2. And then the last term of this 33 plus 35, so on and so forth, will be 2n plus 33. Okay, so now that we've got it written like this, let's maybe color code this via underlines. So the 2, the 6, the 10, all the way up to the 4n minus 2 terms are all kind of in the same family. And then the 33, the 35, the 37, all the way up to the 2n plus 33 term is also in the same family. So I'm going to decompose this sum into those two parts. So I'll put in yellow parentheses the ones that are yellow underlined. We have 2 plus 6 plus dot 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 all the way up to 4n plus 2. Great. And then in this other color, this peach color, I'll put everything that's underlined in that. So we've got 33 plus 35 all the way up to 2n plus 33. Okay, great. So now I guess an important thing to check that these end at the right point. I should say these both end at the right point. And you can easily check that if n equals 299, then that makes this guy equal to 1194, and that makes this guy equal to 629, which is exactly what we want them to be. So this is actually the 299th version of this sum that we're generalizing here. Okay, next I want to notice that each of these sums have two, or sorry, have n plus one terms in them. So we're going to take advantage of that and take out a two from each of these terms. So notice if I, if I subtract two from two, I get zero. Two from six, I get four. All the way up to two from four n plus two, I just get four n. But how many copies of two do I subtract off? n plus one. So I've got two times n plus one plus now all of this stuff which is now left over which will be 4 plus 8 plus all the way up to 4n. And then we're going to play the same game with the second bit except take as many 33s out as possible. So we'll have 33 times n plus 1 and then left over we'll have 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus all the way up to 2 times n. Now we can combine this 2 times n plus 1 and that 33 times n plus 1 to 35 times n plus 1. And then we can do some simplification on these terms as well. Notice I can factor a 4 out of this and I have 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to n. And then I can factor a 2 out of this, and I have 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to n. 
So putting that those together, I see that I have four plus two, well that's six, but I'm actually gonna use a trick here and write this as three times two times one plus two plus three plus all the way up to n like that. Okay, and now I'll take this two times this sum one plus two up to n and I'll rewrite it using kind of a trick that I like. I'll rewrite this as one plus n plus two plus n minus one plus three plus n minus two all the way up to n plus one. So in fact what I've done is I've taken the first copy of this sum and then I've left it in the standard order and I've reversed the second copy of this sum. So you can look at them on top of each other like this. One plus two all the way up to n and then n plus n minus one all the way down to one. And now I've just added the columns. But what help does that give us? Well notice that each of these add up to n plus one. Well, that one's obviously n plus one. And how many of them do we have? We have exactly n of them. So that means that all of this right here adds up to n times n plus one because we're adding n copies of n plus one. Now we can start putting this together. We have 35 times n plus one from this first term. And then we have three times n times n plus one by our argument for this second term. Notice that's also a triangular number. The sum of that is well known, especially if you're trained for math contests. But I like this strategy just like to look at every once in a while. Okay, so now we can put these together and we see that we get three n plus 35 times n plus one. And then all that's left is to evaluate this at n equals 299, which is the value of n which we're looking for over here. So doing that, we see that we get 279,600. Okay, so we've evaluated this first problem. Now let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at the second problem. Now we're ready to look at our second problem. So we want to count up how many natural numbers satisfy the following two conditions. So first, they lie between 1 and 2009. And second, if you raise them to the 20th power, you get a last digit of 1. Okay, well, let's maybe decode this last digit of 1 into something to do with modular arithmetic. So the second condition is equivalent to saying that n to the 20 is congruent to 1 modulo 10. So anytime you want to get the last digit, that's equivalent to dividing by 10 and keeping the remainder, but that's equivalent to reducing mod 10. Now let's recall Euler's theorem. and sometimes this is called Euler's generalization to Fermat's little theorem, says that if the GCD of n and 10 is equal to one, then n to the phi of 10 is congruent to one mod 10. So this is obviously a special case where we're working mod 10. This exists working mod any natural number. So now we just need to calculate phi of 10. Let's recall that the Euler phi function counts up the number of relatively prime numbers that are less than or equal to its input. So this is going to be the size of the set containing 1, 3, 7, and 9. Again, because those are all of the numbers that are relatively prime to 10 between 1 and 10, but that means that this is equal to 4. So let's notice that we have n to the 20 is equal to n to the four to the fifth power, just using exponent rules, but that's gonna be congruent to one to the five, which is congruent to one mod 10, if and only if the GCD of n with 10 is equal to one. And you might say, well, Euler's theorem, as it's written here, maybe looks like it only goes in one direction. 
but in fact it also goes in the other direction. You can prove that if the GCD is not 1, then this most definitely does not hold. So that means we can rephrase our question. We want the number of natural numbers satisfying two conditions. One of them has been changed. The first one hasn't been changed. They still need to be between 1 and 2009, but we can replace this condition into the 20 has a last digit of 1 with the GCD of n with 10 is equal to 1. Okay, so that should actually be pretty easy to count up. So notice n can have the following form. Well, it can either start with a 0, a 1, or a 2. And then the two middle digits in the first two cases are totally free. So I'll just put open boxes there to say that they're free. The two middle digits in this third case must be zero. That's because we have to be less than or equal to 2009. And then the two last digits can only come from that set over there, one, three, seven, nine. So I'll just put like a red box here and a red underline to kind of signify that we can only go from those two spots. So let's notice that there are an equal number of such numbers from these two first cases because we've got total freedom in this box, this box, this box, and this box but we can only choose from our list over there in that third box. So let's see how many possibilities we get. We will have two for each of these rows times 10 times 10. So that would be for each of these boxes times four. And that's for our one, three, seven, nine choice of our last digit. Then for our last row, well, we've only got four possibilities because we have one choice here, one choice here, one choice here, and four choices here. So that means all we have, so that means all that we have are four total choices. But now we can add those together and get the total number of choices, which is 804. So in the end, there are 804 numbers satisfying our two original conditions. And that's a good place to stop.